Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss about the business analysis framework of the data warehouse and its architecture in detail. So in the previous lecture, we have seen the different processes which are involved in a data warehouse. So in this lecture, we are going to have a deep dive into the architecture of a data warehouse. In brief, to get to the proper understanding how the data warehouse is built. So without further ado, let's get into it. So our first topic is business analysis framework. So the business analyst gets the information from the data warehouse to measure the performance and make the critical adjustment in order to win over the other business holders in the market. So having the data warehouse has many advantages that we have also discussed in the previous lectures. So one of them is since the data warehouse can gather the information very quickly and more efficiently, it can enhance the business productivity. And in the long term, it will have a greater impact on the business growth. Our next advantage is a data warehouse provides a consistent view of a customer and items. Hence, it is help us to manage the customer relationship. And also a data warehouse helps in bringing down the cost by tracking the trends patterns over the long period in a consistent and very reliable manner. So this advantage helps for the business growth as well as to excel over the other businesses which are present in the market. So to design an effective and efficient data warehouse, we need to understand and analyze the business needs and construct a business analysis framework. But the each person may have different views regarding how to design a data warehouse. So these views can be the top down view, data source view, the data warehouse view and the business query view. So you might ask what they really means. So the top down view is nothing but the view which allows the selection of relevant information which is needed for a data warehouse. The data source view is nothing but the information being captured, stored and managed by the operational systems. The next one is data warehouse view. It is nothing but the view which includes the fact tables and the dimension tables. It represents the information which is stored inside the data warehouse, just like the metadata that we have discussed in the previous lectures. And the last one is business query view. So it is the view of the data from the viewpoint of an end user. Our next topic is the three tier data warehouse architecture. So generally a data warehouse adopts a three tier architecture. So these are the three tiers of a data warehouse. One is a bottom tier, next one is a middle tier and a top tier. So we'll discuss what are they in brief. So the first one is bottom tier. So the bottom tier of an architecture is the data warehouse database server and server is nothing but the hardware which is required to operate the data warehouse. So it is the relational database system. We use the backend tools and the utilities to feed the data into the bottom tier. So these backend tools and utilities performs the extraction, cleaning and loading the data and also refreshing the functions. We have already discussed how the extract, clean and load process happens in the data warehouse. So if you want to know more, please refer our data warehouse tutorial which is given in the link in the description and also in the i button here. Our next tier is middle tier. In the middle tier, we have the OLAP servers. So there are two ways to implement the OLAP servers. First one is relational OLAP or we can say it is ROLAP, which is an extended relational database management system. So the ROLAP maps the operations on the multi-dimensional data to standard the relational operations. And the next one is multi-dimensional OLAP or a MOLAP model, which directly implements the multi-dimensional data and the operations. And our last tier is top tier. So this tier is the front end client layer. So this layer holds the query tools and the reporting tools, analysis tools and the data mining tools. So there are different reporting tools you might heard before just like a Power BI desktop or an Informatica tool, which is used for reporting and analysis. 
so the following diagram shows the three tier architecture of a data warehouse so here you can see the bottom tier which in which we have the olap servers which is nothing but a data warehouse database server we have the middle tier which have the olap server and the last tier which is a top tier which contains the queries and reporting tools also the analysis and the data mining tools our next topic is data warehouse models so from the perspective of data warehouse architecture we have the following data warehouse model which are virtual warehouse data mart and the enterprise warehouse so we have already discussed what is a data mart its significance in detail so our first model is virtual warehouse so the view over an operational data warehouse is known as a virtual warehouse it is very easy to build a virtual warehouse building a virtual warehouse requires the access capacity on the operational database servers which is nothing but the servers which operates the data warehouse the next one is data mart which you are already familiar with so the data mart contains a subset of organization wide data so this subset of data is valuable for a specific groups of an organization so the manufacturing field there may be several groups such as quality control departments manufacturing departments and research and development departments so these different groups require different types of data and different type of data marts which contains the relevant data which is focused on a specific groups of people so in other words we can claim that the data marts contain the data for a specific particular group but you have to remember some points clearly regarding the data marts so the windows base or unix or linux base servers are used to implement the data marts they are implemented on a low cost server which make it more economical the implementation of a data mart cycles is measured in a short term periods of time that is in the weeks rather than months or years the life cycle of data marts may be complex in long run if its planning and design are not organization wide also the data marts are customized by department so the different departments can customize the data marts as per the requirements the next point is the source of a data mart is departmentally structured data warehouse this is very important as well as the data marts are very flexible which makes them versatile to cope up with the changes which are made according to the requirements of a user and the last point you have to remember is data marts are very small in size and our last data warehouse model is a enterprise warehouse so an enterprise warehouse collects all the information and the subjects spanning an entire organization it provides us the enterprise wide data integration the data is integrated from a operational systems and the external information providers this information can vary from a few gigabytes to a hundreds of gigabytes terabytes or beyond so these are nothing but the enterprise warehouses so i hope you understood what is a business analysis framework in a data warehouse and why we are using the data warehouse in the first place and we have also seen the three tier data warehouse architecture in detail and at the last we have seen the data warehouse models in brief so i hope you got a clear idea how the data warehouse is built according to the requirement of a organization so the next lecture will be continuation of this lecture where we will discuss the load manager warehouse manager query manager as well as the detailed information and a summary information in detail if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell to get the latest updates thanks for watching